Hi there, it's Danny here down on the beach in uh, Cromer. Lovely autumnal evening. But to come down to, to talk today about um, Flint, which, um, well, and whatever we, else we can find, but <laughs> one thing you're guaranteed to find on most North Norfolk beaches, in particular Cromer and Sheringham, is Flint. So, there's still quite a bit of debate about how Flint is formed, but uh, the most common theory tends to be that Flint certainly is a silica based rock, so it's actually effectively uh, the same as a quartz. It's kind of quartz based, but uh, it's, it's silica based and it's um, a rock which was laid down in a Cretaceous era which roughly kind of on top of my head is around about 50 to 90 million years old so all this flint is from 50 to 90 million years old in terms of often it'll uh, turn up fossils sea urchins and bellamites are the uh, fossils which can occur in it most commonly but uh, it also forms another type of flint, a centrally hollow flint called Paramudra, which has quite a few theories about actually. But how does flint form? Well, the most common um, theory is that it formed on the seabed certainly and is associated with chalk, which is um, the white chalky material you find just under these wave cut platforms here in Cromer actually and certainly when you go along to Overstrand or West Rondon you see them very well. So it occurred in the same time period as the chalk and it forms as bands in some of the chalk. The chalk is around about a thousand feet in depth so quite a considerable depth and it was laid down on the sea floor uh, very similarish conditions to the Caribbean today. So it was laid down in hot, warm, clear seas. And the, the chalk itself is the exoskeletons of, of tiny little plankton creatures. The flint, in theory, is believed to be the organic ooze from other creatures which died on the seabed as uh, things like uh, sponges and uh, starfish and crinoids and brittle stars as for all of those creatures um, died the organic ooze from them seeped through the cracks in the chalk and formed all of this flint which is quite mind-boggling when you think of the scale of, of life and that can be reduced to stone over all those millions of years. So that's the common theory behind flint and certainly the theory behind chalk. There are a few other theories out there um, but we'll leave those for another time but that's the commonly recognised theory. As I walk around here there's a few I've like to spot this is an erratic which has been brought here by the glaciers and dumped. Uh, something like uh, basalt I think possibly so that stone would have been dumped here by the glaciers um, in one of the last last, last ice ages as, uh, as the glaciers retreated as they pushed down from Scotland and uh, Norway and the north of the UK and left the rocks which, which don't fit here and hence they're called erratic because they don't necessarily geologically belong here so that's today's little foray on the beach. Oh, I mentioned the paramudra actually. This is a good example, which by sheer fluke I've stumbled across. This middle is hollow chalk, uh, or chalk which eventually hollows out if you're really lucky to get a hollow flint. Um, some of them are, are vastly bigger than that and are actually made of several flints and, and might be say a metre across. So, the theory behind those, um, the, the most commonly uh, used theory, is that 
possibly a, a worm created that burrow in the middle and then the flint formed as a concretion around the burrow but uh, of course worms uh, have no or pretty much all soft parts and therefore there's no evidence of those worms I believe ever being found apart from possibly those trace fossils that were left so thanks for watching and it's Danny from Little Jim's Rock Shop in Cromer just up the hill there in Cromer so hope to see a few of you there and enjoy your day bye